now, so we're just getting a quorum in. Thumbs up if you can hear me, Alex. Denny, can you hear me? Yep. All right. Thumbs, Gail. Tim, you got a piece of tape, you probably know it, but. Evening, everyone. It's Ryan and Gail. No, it's Ryan and Rick. They're both, they're both coming in. We do have, well, here we go. There we go. We do have all the council in. We have uh, right now one citizen on. I think I think it might be Jenny Holmes, but it's Jenny someone. Michelle's on vacation. She's out in Minnesota, so I know she will not be on. And I'm not sure if uh, Randy will be on either. They've been working some late hours with this project. Chiefs here. Hey, Jim. Yes. Is this being recorded? Yes, it is. Okay. I just wanted to share with council that I know tonight we're going to vote to extend um, remote council meetings through the end of August. Um, for those that don't know, I'm in yeah. healthcare. And I'll just let you know that realistically, if we follow the science, we're all going to be meeting come June. So just wanted to let you know that uh, I, I appreciate them going out till August, but there, we should be actually. Should the, the, this, 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 that. that conversation should take place in the discussion of when it comes up. Okay. Julie, you got too much sun in your room to be sitting in Vicksburg. It's hard to come inside, I gotta tell you. It's like torture. <laughs> Where are you? Um, New Orleans. Um, we've got a, uh, my daughter's got a duplex and I'm helping her and, you know, I don't wanna leave her with this until it's 
pretty stable. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Well, it's, it's a good time. It's fun. We're having a great time. Good. You're not collecting beads, are you, Julie? No, I'm not. No. no. Okay. They canceled all that. In fact, they took down all the um, float houses. The, oh, yeah. They took the Mardi Gras um, things down. So. No. You know it's bad when that happens. Yeah. yeah, they didn't want people. I mean, they didn't mind people walking the sidewalks, but they didn't want the crowds 15 people deep. Yeah. Well, it is seven o'clock. Looks like we have everybody in attendance. I'll uh, go ahead and call to order tonight's Village Council regular session. Today, March 15, 2021, is seven o'clock. So, Mr. Mallory, if you'd mind putting up the flag, and I'll. Uh, I'll lead this. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag of the United States of America, States of America. 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 and to, to the republic, republic for which it stands, stands. one nation, indivisible, God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Liberty and justice for all. <laughs> oh, brother. <laughs> You're a little fast, Ryan. I'm racing through it. Yeah, that's my fault. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> well, thank you. Good evening. We'll uh, take a minute, moment of silence here, and then, Jim, if you would, when you get ready, if you take roll call. Okay, we will uh, start roll call, and um, if you are outside of the village of Vicksburg, if you can state where you are. Um, when we do the roll call. Trustee Merrill. Out of town in New Orleans, Louisiana. New Orleans, Louisiana. Thank you. Trustee Olson. Yes. Trustee Holmes. Here. Trustee Wagner. Present. Trustee Reister. Here. President Pro Temp Keller. Here. <clears throat> Trustee Olson. Yes. President Frisbee. Here. Uh, uh, every, everyone is in attendance with uh, Trustee Farrell uh, calling in and uh, virtually from New Orleans. Well, we have an agenda in front of us. Uh, there is one addition, and Jim, you can tell us where you want to put it, but we have a household hazardous waste that we want to uh, address tonight. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, if we could place into item number uh, 10D, we're looking for uh, council approval, uh, having the village manager enter into the contract with the county of uh, Kalamazoo. Uh, through its Health and Community Services Department um, and Environmental Health Division, the Household Hazardous Waste Program. So that will be added as 10E. Everybody's had a chance to look it over. Be 10D. 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 David. David. If all uh, looked in order, other uh, changes that. <laughs> entertain a motion to accept the agenda. Uh, Mr. President, uh, Trustee Keller, I move that we approve the agenda as amended. Trustee Wagner, I'll support. Trustee uh, Keller makes a motion to approve the agenda with support from Trustee Wagner. Hearing no further conversations, a roll call vote will be Trustee Olson. Yes. Trustee Reister. Yeah. Trustee Holmes. Yes. Trustee Wagner. Yes. Trustee Merrill. Yes. <clears throat> President Pro Temp Keller. Yes. President Frisbee. Yes. And motion passes. Motion passed. We have an agenda in front of us. I don't see that we have any scheduled appearances. Uh, no scheduled appearances and no uh, public official appearances or public officials on the call. 
There so we'll are open up this, excuse me, we'll open up this time for citizens' comments and agenda and non agenda items. Please we do name and home address, limit it to four minutes. Uh, we have uh, uh, three citizens and, and actually four, one in the press, Jeff. So um, if we have one person calling in, so it's star six to indicate you wish to talk, we'll give a 30 seconds to a minute. And if you uh, don't indicate you wish to talk during that time, we'll be uh, moving forward. Uh, if you're on your computer, just move the cursor on your screen and at the bottom, you'll see uh, it says raised hands. You just click on that raised hand. You'll have the opportunity to speak. Again, um, I think it's Mr. Steers is calling in. He knows how to uh, hit the star six. So I'll give it a couple more seconds. Um, again, if you don't indicate you wish to talk, once we uh, continue on with the agenda, we'll continue on. Okay, Mr. Frisbee, I do not see any indication from anyone uh, desiring to talk. All right, so we have uh, approval of the general consent agenda, which includes the minutes from the last week, last um, general, session, general council meeting, March 1st. We have warrant reports totaling $178,974.73. We have event rental requests, a choice stock, Graduation party May 29th, Alicia Sprinkle grad party May uh, May 30th, and Kurt Brown wedding at the historic village uh, July 17th. So everyone had an opportunity to review the consent agenda, and if there's any comments or clarifications, we're hearing now none. We'll uh, entertain a motion of support. President Frisbee, Trustee Wagner, I move that we approve the general consent agenda. So we have a motion by Trustee Wagner. We have support. Trustee Reister, support. Trustee Reister, support. So we have approved the general consent agenda. So it takes us to village council. Uh, we'll, we'll need to take the roll take call. The, roll, call the roll call vote. Uh, Trustee Wagner with the motion supported by Trustee Reister. Here, no additional uh, comments on, on the item. Uh, Trustee Merrill. Yes. Trustee Holmes. Yes. Trustee Keller. Yes. Trustee Olson. Yes. Trustee Wagner. Yes. Trustee Reister. Yes. President Frisbee. Yes. Motion passes. Do we have the uh, council item action items in front of us? First is a resolution declaring a local state of emergency for the purpose of permitting the village council and other public bodies of the village to meet by electronic and telephonic means. And I will uh, attempt to share the screen. I hope to here. Um, well, let me, we got, we had a, the YouTube is continuing on. So I got to, shut off the what was the Pledge of Allegiance. I don't know if I'm getting better at the Zoom stuff or not. <laughs> You're better than I would be. <laughs> um, all right, let me I'm hold. I'll put up this, I'll be, uh, Happy to read down to the last paragraph, uh, Mr. Frisbee, on, on this motion. It is a resolution declaring a local state of emergency for the purpose of permitting the village council and other public bodies of the village to meet by electronic and telephonic means. The minutes of tonight's regular meeting of the village council, the village of Vicksburg, which is being held on March 15th, 2021 
and began at 7 o'clock p.m. local time by electronic means. President was a full member of the council, all seven members, no one was absent. Whereas as recently as March 2nd, 2021, the director of the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services made the following findings. The novel coronavirus, COVID-19, is a respiratory disease that can result in serious illness or death. It is caused by a new strain of coronavirus not previously identified in humans and easily spread from person to person. COVID-19 spreads through close human contact, even from individuals who may be asymptomatic. On March 10th, 2020, MDHHS identified the first two presumptive positive cases of COVID-19 in Michigan. As of March 1st, 2021, Michigan had seen 589,150 confirmed cases and 15,534 confirmed deaths attributed to COVID-19. Michigan was one of the states most heavily impacted by COVID-19 early in the pandemic, with new cases peaking at nearly 2,000 per day in late March. Strict preventative measures and the cooperation of Michiganders drove daily case numbers dramatically down to fewer than 200 confirmed cases per day in mid-June, greatly reducing the loss of life. Beginning in October, Michigan again experienced an exponential growth in cases. New cases peaked at nearly 10,000 cases per day in mid-November, followed by increases in COVID-19 hospitalizations and deaths. On November 15, 2020, MDHHS issued an order enacting protections to slow the high and rapidly increasing rate of spread of COVID-19. Cases, hospitalizations, and deaths remain high through early December, threatening hospital and public health capacity. On December 7, 2020, December 18, 2020, and January 13, 2021, MDHHS issued orders sustaining those protections. These orders played a crucial role in slowing the spread in Michigan and have brought new cases down to about 1,500 per day. These lower, case, these lower rates prevented Michigan's healthcare system from being overwhelmed with a holiday surge. As of February 27th, the state of Michigan had a seven-day average of 91.2 cases per million people, nearly 88% lower than the case rate in mid-November. While well, that case rate is similar to the rate in early October, it has plateau plateaued over the past week and remains three times the rate of the summer low point. Test positivity was 3.7% as of February 27th and has started to plateau as well. While metrics have decreased from all time highs, further progress has tapered off and there is growing concern of another spike with the presence of more infectious variants in Michigan and the, in, and the United States as a whole. Even where COVID-19 does not result in death and where Michigan's emergency and hospital systems are not heavily burdened, the disease can cause great harm. Recent estimates suggest that one in 10 persons who suffer from COVID-19 will experience long-term symptoms referred to in quotes as long COVID and the quotes. These symptoms, including fatigue, shortness of breath, joint pain, depression, and headache can be disabling. They can last for months, and in some cases, arise unexpectedly in patients with few or no symptoms of COVID-19 at the time of diagnosis. COVID-19 has also been shown to damage the heart and kidneys. Furthermore, minority groups in Michigan have experienced a higher proportion of, in quotes, long COVID, end the quotes. The best way to prevent these complications is to prevent transmission of COVID-19. Since December 11, 2020, the Food and Drug Administration has granted emergency use authorizations to three vaccines to prevent COVID-19, providing a path to end the pand pandemic. Michigan is now partaking in the largest mass vaccination effort in modern history and is presently working toward vaccinating at least 70% of Michigan residents 16 years of age and older as quickly as possible. 
New and unexpected challenges continue to arise. In early December 2020, a variant of COVID-19 known as B117 was detected in the United Kingdom. This variant is roughly 50 to 70% more infectious than the more common strain. On January 16, 2021, this variant was detected in Michigan. It is anticipated that the variant, if it becomes widespread in the state, will significantly increase the rate of new cases. Currently, Michigan is second in the nation with respect to the number of B117 variants detected. To date, there are over 400 cases, and this is one-fifth of all the cases identified in the United States. CDC modeling predicts B117 could become the predominant variant by the end of March. At present, however, it appears that cases have plateaued. And whereas the director of the MDHHS has concluded that the COVID-19 pandemic constitutes continues to constitute an epidemic in Michigan and that control of the epidemic requires restrictions on public gatherings. And whereas the village council desires to conduct the public business of the village of Vicksburg in a manner so as not to place a risk to members of the public village staff or members serving on public bodies of the village. Now, therefore, it is resolved that pursuant to the authority contained at the General Law Village Act, Act 3 of 1985, Section 64.2 and 67.1C, the Village President, duties as Conservator of Peace, Section 2, the President is a Conservator of the Peace and may exercise within the village the power to suppress disorder. The president may command the assistance of all able-bodied citizens to aid in the enforcement of the ordinance of the council in cases of emergency or disaster, subject to the applicable limitations of the state law authorizing municipalities to provide for the public health and safety of persons. Uh, <clears throat> Section three of the Opens Meeting Act, MCL 15.263, subparagraph, subparent two, permitting a public body to meet by electronic or telephonic means upon declaration of a state of a local state of emergency or state of disaster if meeting in person would place at risk the personal health or safety of members of the public or members of the public body. And section 10B of the Emergency Management Act permitting the village president to declare a local state of emergency. Turn it over to Mr. Frisbee. Yeah. I, Timothy Frisbee, village president of the village of Vicksburg, based on the findings made by the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services regarding the public health threat posed by COVID-19, the novel coronavirus, and its variant strains declare a local state of emergency to permit the village council and all other public bodies of the village to continue to meet by electronic and telephonic means after March 30th, 2021, and respectfully request the village council affirm this action through August 31 of 2021. So that is the resolution that we're asking of this council. Um, I'd entertain a motion and, and seconds and we can have discussion. Uh, Trustee Keller, I. Uh... Move as submitted. So, President Frisbee, if a question, if I may, is this well, resolution? We need, just we a, need a support. Oh, I, need all a support right, first. I, I thought, all right. I'll support. Okay, we Julie have a, support. Okay, we have, have the motion was offered by President Pro Temp Keller, supported by Trustee Merrill, and now uh, President. Frisbee, if uh, wishes to entertain the conversation, go ahead. Yeah, let, let's definitely have a conversation about it. It's uh, I'm not one to be a fear monger by any means, and I want this to be done and gone out of our lives as soon as possible. But what it does do, if, if the governor doesn't address this, it ends March 31st, right? So um, becoming uh, April, we would have to meet in person in our facilities. 
uh, at, at the time, current time, just doesn't warrant us trying to spread out, um, you know, safely and, 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 and conduct our business. Um, so going into the summer, I, you know, Jim staff is going to be looking at some different facilities that we can have more room and entertain um, you know, a good amount of distance between us and, uh, and allow for the village residents to come. Um, and so, yeah, I, I, we just want to cover our basics and that's all we're asking. Does it mean that we as a village are going to not meet in person until August? We'll play it, make common sense decisions. Uh, but it does give us the ability to do that in case something pops up and the governor, you know, the, the, our first meeting in April, the governor hasn't done anything. And here we are we're going to try to meet in, the, you know, the ambulance and just pile in there like sardines. So. It's just a precautionary measure. And so I'd love to hear um, any, anyone's discussions at this point. So Rick, I know you had some comments on it. No, Tim, I think you hit it because the way that I read, the way that I was reading it was that we were going through August with uh, electronic meetings, but the way you described it is that really it's up to um, staff and council as far as when we meet in person, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. We we can rescind this resolution before the August sunset date. We we can we can vote in June if things look really well. We we can we can rescind this resolution. We can put in a new resolution that we're going back to normal normal meetings. Um, I I think it just makes sense right now for us to do this and uh, to may, to maybe go you know say until August but it doesn't mean that we have to stay with that like Carl said we can rescind it and so I think I just think it's smart for us to do this. You know, last two years ago we met at the pavilion outdoors that was phenomenal. That that may be an opportunity for us to open it back up and have a you know, a celebration of life or, or whatever, you know, return to normal and yeah. just get the community together there that we could plan. But it gives us the opportunity to actually look ahead to plan it and not have to be panicked about what we need to do next. So it's just foresight, forethinking and in, in how we operate our business. So Rick, you had a comment. I wanna I want to hear you talk from a medical profession, you know, what, what you're hearing in, in your industry. Um, yeah, I appreciate that, Tim. It's, and I, I won't get too far into the weeds with everybody, but we all know that around the country, various states are taking different approaches towards this. Um, also, I don't know if it, to, what, to what level, um, I just saw this also today that the House of Representatives, 75% of, of the representatives, elected officials are vaccinated, the other 25% aren't. Herd immunity used to be between the two thirds and three quarters. And if you're at 75%, they're still refusing to meet. So this, I, I, I project this, this debate about when we're meeting, when we're not meeting, what's opening, what's not opening, will continue for the foreseeable future just simply because it's been politicized in the last year and it will continue to be. So I don't, the discussion's not right or left Democratic Republican. It's just simply, I think that the, the approach that we're taking is, is correct because we don't know how long this is going to go out. But if you were to ask me, um, you know, my humble opinion, I'm attending an in-person conference for the first time since March 10th of last year. And it's on April 14th. My company on in early April, all 10,000 employees across four corporate offices in LA, Chicago, and other, other people with mask on in there and I also feel strongly that this is people's business and at some point we're really happy to see council and staff. I think that also we have to err on the side of caution. So I would hate to see us all get together and have a whole group of people come together and all of a sudden have this huge problem. So I think for right now, what we're doing right now is the best. And, and I'm hoping, Rick, that you're right, that by June, 
maybe we will be able to just meet in person. I hope that's true. As I said, this, this gives us an out at least. This, yeah. This. yeah. Yeah. I, I won't call out names specifically, uh, but one of our council members celebrated a one year anniversary with their, their business. And four days later, after celebrating their, their company, nobody getting COVID, lo and behold, somebody came down with the COVID and uh, got quite sick. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, that's all that happened, but uh, you, just, you just don't know. And uh, we don't yep. want to take it for granted and just play our on the side of caution at this point in time. Uh, I, I would love for this to be gone and us to be meeting as soon as possible, but this at least gives us the legal authority to, to continue what we're doing. If we find next month, two months, it's, it's not the right thing. So. Right. That's all. And, and as, as uh, Carl said, you know, we would have to take a resolution uh, rescinding this resolution. So we'd have to meet as a council and vote. Uh, so we would have to come up upon the next meeting. So hopefully things will radically change by then, but you never know. Um, President Frisbee, obviously we'll have staff keep monitoring the situation as well, correct? So that- Yes, yes. The, I, I know they're in touch with the state and everything a lot more than we are. So they, I'm sure Jim has, a, has an ear to what's going on and when. Uh, we're vaccinated um, in the near future. Just, just and the, uh, for me, I feel more comfortable being around people. So, and I certainly would be, yeah, I would be horrified to give it to somebody else if I was like a carrier or something. So, um, but I think that as we get people more vaccinated, then we're going to all feel more comfortable getting it. President Fresby. Yes, Danny. Um, <clears throat> a week ago, yesterday, um, I was on a pawpaw and on business. Um, I got up early Sunday morning, and Karen, my wife, uh, felt something was wrong with me. And she felt it for a day or so, and she just couldn't put her finger on it. Uh, when I started getting dressed and trying to put socks on my books, she really knew something was wrong. So she insisted that I go to Bronson Emergency. And the first thing Most definitely could do all the things. And be looking at two weeks ago tonight, and Jim confirmed this just before a council meeting. I got deathly ill. Just kind of blew it off. I'm one of those guys, you know, you can run me off. Um, I had to pick up some some rare books on that and I stepped out of the van and walked about 15 feet and walked and fell flat on my face and this is where again they thought it might be a stroke but ruled it out um, I got my business done came home and um, first thing I did was call Jim and inform him Second person I called was Chief McMillan. If I go down and and something's wrong, I want them to know in advance what it's going to be. I called these guys before I even called my family. So um, Jim came over to the house, him and his lovely wife, and dropped off a big pot of soup. And as he left, I walked out on the front porch to pick it up. And guess what? Went flat down on my face again and got wedged between a bench and the house. Now I know what a turtle feels like, so, uh, and it's not fun. Um, for the last week, I've been in quarantine, self-quarantine, and I, they want me to be through the, up through Friday. So um, I think whatever I've had, I didn't, I haven't had it for a week. I think I've had it for two to three weeks, but for some reason, I've been able to shake it off. 
Um, it, this is not fun. I swore up and down I would never get the shot. Guess what? As soon as I get clearance, I'm getting the shots. Yeah, bad. Um, yeah, yeah, this is not fun. Um, just the thought of even having a stroke was bad enough. But um, this, yeah, I'm one of those people, yeah, I'll wear the mask and I'll, I'll do the social distancing and this and that. But, you know, I got to live my life too. I got a business to run. My wife's got a business to run. And I'm going to do what it's going to take to, to make sure that I keep going. So um, if you even think of anything, man, this, you got to go get checked. So it, it doesn't take that long, but I tell you what, I do, I do not like to stick up the nose, believe me. I don't know. Anybody <laughs> no, that. that's not. Oh, that know. drives me. It's the first, first five <laughs> seconds that drives you nuts. Second five, that, that, that's the nuts part. But yeah, it's. Um, well, we're glad that you're doing better, Denny. Yeah. Well, and I, the thing is, I'm keeping busy. I'm taking lots of naps. So I, I, I get tired. I get tired right now. And I grab the dog and go take a nap. So, um, yeah. Denny, I'll share with you that I was able to schedule two COVID vaccinations, um, just a, one one on Wednesday morning at one or what after one and one in, at four in the afternoon. Yeah. The vaccinations are out there. They're they're available if you search for them. We're going to be swimming in vaccines come April. Yeah. Um, yeah. My, my only concern with this, and, and I'll vote yes on this because for all the reasons everyone stated, it's, it's the right thing to do. But it's just simply, there is no quantifiable thing that will happen when we all cross the finish line and we say, okay, let's get together. Because yeah. we're still going to have knuckleheads out there that won't get vaccinated. Yeah. We're still going to have children that we, that studies are still struggling with. Do they get vaccinated? Don't they? And so, I mean, we could be stro we could be strolling into next year, a year from now, with the same thing, and that's my only concern. But I believe enough in staff, uh, the village manager and staff, to realize they're good people and they're going to look at the data and the science. But I'm just sharing with fellow council members: this is not as easy as we think. It's going to be just to rescind this because yeah. I can tell you, for every thing someone's going to bring to the table that says, "Hey, let's do this," there's probably going to be another person that's going to say, "Well." But over here, look at this data as well. And that's the unfortunate thing about this mess that we're in. Yeah. You remember when chicken pox was a thing to be afraid of or AIDS or, <laughs> yeah. And the thing I always remember, I heard a lecture one time, the guy says, you know, this is bad. This is bad. This is bad. What's, what's worse than this? And you got to stop and think, yeah, they're, they're right, man. What, you know, AIDS was bad enough. And yet we've, we've got it to a point where we can control it. We're, we're at the point where we're, we're working on controlling this. What's the next thing? Let's that's not even good. think about it, Jenny. Yeah, yeah, but that's, no. yeah. It's, it's not gonna go away. I mean, this no. is come, this is gonna become something we deal with every- Right. Well, look at the common like influenza. Look at the flu. You know? Yeah, it's good, it's gonna yeah. be like the influenza. I mean, you, you still, but you don't hear about it like you used to, but the H1N1, the swine flu, yeah. person three years ago that got deathly sick from the swine flu you know it was not near as bad as this so it's it's gonna be something we're gonna live with we're gonna have to deal with yep. but uh, yeah just precautionary measures just gives us the ability to to do it on our time frame you know well, Karen, karen's already said she's gonna wear a mask the rest of her life but once she goes out in public doesn't matter what it is, whether it's flu or <laughs> she'll or, get over that too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't know. She's pretty stubborn. So, <laughs> you know, who wear masks religiously go through airports, especially out west, and you'll see yeah. um, a lot of um, people from Asia that will wear masks religiously when they travel, and and so even before they've always had to before. Know, so I think you're right. We'll we'll start seeing this more and more people wearing masks even after we're over this. Yeah, absolutely. Well, if there's no other discussion, uh, we have a motion in a second. We'll uh, take a roll call, Mr. Mallory. Okay, I believe that uh, President Pro Temp Keller made the motion seconded or supported by Trustee Reeser. Merrill. No, it was Merrill. Merrill. I Trustee do Merrill. Okay, I do apologize. Sure. Trustee Merrill. Get different. <laughs> <laughs> We're just right together here, Julie. Cut my hair shorter. <laughs> yeah. Okay.
uh, motion made by uh, Trustee Keller and supported by Trustee Merrill and a roll call vote. Trustee Wagner. Yes. Trustee Holmes. Yes. Trustee Olson. Yes. Trustee Reister. Yes. Trustee Merrill. Yes. President Pro Temp Keller. Yes. President Frisbee. Yes. And motion the carries. Uh, resolution and motion carry. The um, next item I'll bring back up on the shared screen is this is uh, put in front of the council for uh, approval of the uh, village manager to enter a uh, contract with CT Electrical Service, as you can see, and was supplied in the packet. Um, there is a device that needs to be replaced that operates the pump to the 10 inch well that services the irrigation out at Angels uh, Crossing. Uh, back in the day, we believe X amount of years ago, um, there was a 125 horsepower pump put on a system designed for 100 horsepower, and it's uh, caught up to the controllers of that system. So this is uh, correcting that issue. Uh, the price, and it was a competitive bid, we uh, received, I believe, three quotes on this, and this is uh, the low bid at uh, $12,650. So be happy to answer any questions. Uh, looking for a, a uh, motion in uh, support of the motion, and then um, at the council's desire uh, for the village manager to enter into this contract. Yeah, just now, one as, quick as question. As you all are, are seeing, we're having to pay for some ineptness, I believe, of some prior administrations, so to speak. Um, also, was built as a private entity at during uh, initial construction, and we've taken over the ownership of it, so we have to take over some of the liability within that. But it was definitely that VFD was oversized for the application, so um, you know that's just as just as bad as being too undersized on a on an electric motor they, they just don't play nice when when you do that and it just wore out the bft which you know from my experience and i've been doing this for you know, 35 years it's uh, probably one of the most costly components of it is the bft and the controller system for it so this is right there what i would expect that price to be for a 100 horsepower unit do you need a um emotion correct like a, a motion of support, yes. Okay, yeah, I move that we approve the village manager to sign a contract with CT Electrical Services Incorporated for $12,650 to purchase and install a new VFD for the Angels Crossing well. Trustee Keller support. We Trustee have... Reese are making the motion with support from Trustee Keller. And I do have a quick question. Yes, Trustee Wagner. Uh, Tim, if this is your area of expertise, could you give me a high level overview of what exactly a VFD is? <laughs> it controls the speed of the uh, electric motor driving the pump. It, okay. it plays. It, it's a, con yeah, well, Carl would jump in, but it controls the flow, right? So if you've got, if the, the it's got, I don't know how many zones out there for different fairways and areas. And you can run different zones at different times. So you can have four zones running at once, which needs X amount of flow, or you can run one zone at a time. So if you try running one zone with the, the amount of flow for four, you're, you're going to destroy the system. So you can control the flow by controlling the speed of the system to compensate for wherever you're running it. Right. Okay. A v, so a VF, the VFD is basically a variable frequency drive, and it plays with, with the frequency, the, the electrical frequency of the motor, so it can ramp it up, ramp it down. Uh, when you turn the pump on, it can it can set with an Excel time, so you don't get water. It's called water hammer, where it, you know, you get a you get a bunch of water coming in. That's not good either. It can also decel, so you also don't get water hammer when you're, so, when you're shutting it off. So it's like a regulator. Is it like a yeah. regulator? Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah, they used to back in the back of years ago. They used to use belts and pulleys oh. to 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 change this. You know the the yeah. speed of the motor, but it, it increases the efficiency of the motor. It increases. You know, um, it gives you the more bang for your buck. I guess the the other two items on there, the line reactor and the and the um, the surge suppressor, those are definitely needed. The line reactor cleans up the power coming into the VFD. Uh, VFDs don't like dirty power coming in. And the surge suppressor is definitely needed because if you have any spikes or anything on the electrical line, that'll damage because the VFD is electronics and, and spikes or surges will, will kill it. So um, so everything that was on there was is, is pretty much what you should have, so. That was the explanation I was looking for. I Thank appreciate you, it. Thank you, Carl. You got a pump guy. Thank you, you got an electric guy here. So. Yeah, that's I, yeah. I sell them, so I don't sell those, but I sell drives. So, on, on, Thank you. Uh, on a positive note, when we looked into this issue, um, we are changing the power uh, with consumers on that unit to off-peak rates as um, that operates predominantly in off-peak hours. So that was a positive discovery. So we will get appropriately the lower rates when that runs. So. Cool. Cool. Mr. Mallory, I, just two quick quick questions. Um, so if I understand correctly, this is, we're not, we're not replacing the existing unit because it's gone bad. It's simply because we need a, a, a lower power VFD or has been described, is that, is that correct? Well, uh, Randy might be able to help me. I don't know if, if it went bad, I was gonna lean to that it wasn't operating properly, but Randy, can you clarify that? The VFD is bad and, and does have to be replaced. Okay. And my second question is, is that because I'm not aware the golf course got any smaller, so why was a larger one being used? What was it? What was the larger area that it was covering? Yeah, what what the deal was it was uh, years ago, and and it's it is it, it I believe is either four or five years ago. I was the village manager. The pump went out. What happened was the company that um, we were going to purchase a pump from. Uh, gave a spare pump, which is in there, the 125 horse. They were going to rebuild the uh, pump that was with the unit. It was never rebuilt. They left the one in. Um, and uh, it's unclear to me, I, I, my memory doesn't have any of those details being brought to me. It was um, I guess I'll leave it as prior. It, Renaissance Golf had nothing to do with it. It was prior to their arrival. So this has nothing to do with the possibility of um, citizens' lawns on the golf course being watered by by Angels Crossing, or or no? No, it has nothing to do with that. And that practice ended a couple years ago. Okay. Well, that, that that's what I was looking for on the record because I do appreciate the work that you and others did to end that practice. And I just wasn't sure if the extra capacity in the line was simply to take care of those other people's lawns. And now we're obviously not doing it. Correct. Well, we can uh, get a motion of support to enter into the contract. I think we have the motion, don't we? Yeah, the a motion. Yeah. No further discussion support. if we do roll call. Okay. And uh, for for the record, I just switched to the next thing. Was it uh, who provided the motion? Trustee Reister provided the motion and it was supported by Trustee Keller. I do appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Hit CTs and writing on those folks thing. Okay. Roll call <laughs> vote will be Trustee Wagner. Yes. Trustee Holmes. Yes. Trustee Olson. Yes. Trustee yes. Merrill. Trustee Merrill. Yes. Trustee Reister. Yes. 
President Pro Temp Keller. Yes. President Frisbee. Yes. And um, that work will be completed. Uh, we'll notify the company uh, tomorrow. The next is similar. You know, bring it up. Is um, two different procedures. Uh, we have um, requesting council approval to enter a contract with Oswald Electric um, in in an amount not not to exceed. I believe it was ninety eight hundred dollars. Get it back up. Um, and the short story there is uh, at the basement at the clubhouse charges the carts. Uh, two years ago, um, Renaissance first kind of winter uh, with us, uh, we discovered that there was problems with the charging of the carts. And we had uh, experts, electricians come out and determine that the wiring was to residential standards and not commercial standards. So we did temporary fixes uh, to get through those seasons, but we made quite an investment with an upgrade to the carts that will be offered this year. And uh, it is the recommendation that we make the investments to ensure it's a different uh, golf cart company, and there's questions if if they if the warranties would be uh, invalidated due to the electrical system. Um, so we uh, have uh, in front of us, and Dan Oswalt has has uh, done other work out at Angels and um, has graciously as well. Um, answered a lot of questions throughout the last uh, two and a half, three years in this process, but it is staff's recommendation um, to utilize the two quotes in front of you and enter into a contract with Oswald Electric. Yeah, this is, I recall when they first came on, we kind of modified that system to accommodate you know, so we wouldn't have a, a hazardous condition out there and kind of remember discussing that we we're going to have to address this down the road so this yeah, is this, where they, i think they put in 110 amp service to charge all those golf carts overnight and it's just it's just not it's just not the right thing for one it, it take far too long to charge and two it's could be unsafe Correct. And the other, this will be a 400 amp service, one box with all the appropriate brackets, new uh, wiring to the standards of the carts uh, as well. Um, and the other positive in this is it brings in an additional power source from consumers. And that power source, again, will be charged predominantly at the off peak hours as those carts are charging overnight. Um, there'll be on a percentage level, probably less than 10%. Uh, as the course is operating, there'll be carts brought in to charge, especially on busy days, but 90% but plus of the charging will be in the off peak hours and we'll be able to have that registered with consumers in that manner as well. And just to clarify, I think I said 9,800, it's actually a contract not to exceed 9,900. Yeah, it's it comes to ninety eight sixty six. Well, we'd entertain a motion of support to move into the um, contract with. Trustee Wagner, I'll make the motion that we approve the village manager to sign a contract with electrical company to install the new commercial grade electric service to Angels Crossing basement. They will properly charge the golf carts, amount not to exceed 9,900, utilizing the low bid process. We have a motion by Trustee Wagner. We have support. Trustee Holmes, second. Trustee Holmes, second. And I do want to clarify um, the we did receive only two quotes. Multiple contacts were made with with 
uh, professionals in this area. Um, and I don't know, I think it's a sign of good times how busy people are in the construction business. So I this one meets our purchasing policy. Two, we have what I would describe as, as a critical timing of this as we'd like the work to be completed this week prior to the arrival of our fleet of carts here in the next 10 to 14 days. The other is on the two different quotes and um, uh, strategies in tackling this issue within our purchasing policy, uh, we are far more comfortable with this quote. The other quote we did receive, uh, so it's clear to the council, it was lower, but would not perform in the long run in staff's evaluation, as well as Renaissance evaluation and looking at everything. And that is why uh, I am recommending uh, to go with, with the, the uh, program that, that Dan Oswell put forward. And again, I'm, it does meet our purchasing policy and we do have that latitude. I like the idea of when we can dealing with local people. I like that idea very much. I see everybody's head nodding. So yes, absolutely. It was good to see all as well electric. Yeah. Um, President, President Frisbee, I, I will, uh, full disclosure to the council, I'll be abstaining on this vote as I was involved with Mr. Oswald in putting a proposal together for this project. So I, I'm, I'm familiar with it. Um, so um, I'm going to abstain on this. I, I think it's important to note too that um, I personally, who who had this assignment, if you will, for staff and worked with uh, Tom Hand and, and Dave Mancini out at, at the course, um, did not have knowledge until uh, Carl and I had contact with each other. I think it was Friday or Saturday that Carl had even been involved in um, the quote with Oswald Electric and not anything to at all against Carl, but it didn't even play into, nor would it ever into staff's consideration of which way to go. So um, I appreciate Carl bringing that forward, um, but it didn't have bearing on why I'm recommending uh, to proceed the way I am. Thank you both. Okay. Um, President Frisbee, side question. Jim, how soon are we looking to open the golf course this season? It's all weather related. It's strictly okay. weather related on the investment. And uh, yeah. so. I know some local courses have been on the news. They're already opening. I personally think it's too early, but. Well, think, yeah. Uh, me too. Yeah. Well, I yeah. think we're going to get hit with a big uh, lot of rain before the end of the month. So. Yeah, it's. Uh, um, I have uh, instructed Tom and Dave, they'll give me a heads up, but that it is solely there. I'm gonna trust their expertise in the area and it'll be their call. Uh, we do get inquiries and, and you know, we can certainly appreciate and respect the uh, lobbying that goes on, but uh, we'll open the course when it's best for the conditions of the course long-term. I will, through this process I've learned, so I'll share um, it, to winterize the golf course is anywhere from a ten to fifteen thousand dollar endeavor just to winterize it appropriately with the appropriate chemicals. So some citizens always ask me, you know, uh, we put up trespassing signs on the golf course to not walk on the golf course and that during the winter. It is not a public park. It's a golf course, and uh, we are investing. Uh, like I said, in excess of $10,000 to keep that course in condition for when spring comes. So, so there's a rhyme and a reason um, we have those requests, no different than uh, the timing of the opening of it. Um, so. All right, with that, we have a Trustee Wagner motion and Trustee Holmes second to, can we do a roll call please? Yes, we can. Trustee Reister. Yes. Trustee Merrill.
I see her shaking in the affirmative. I hear, yes. and now yes. she's spoken. Yes, I don't, Tru I don't trusty, want to shout. <laughs> trusty Olson. Yes. Trusty Holmes. Yes. Trustee Wagner. Yes. President Frisbee. Yes. And the record will reflect the reason why in the abstaining of uh, President Pro Temp Keller. Thank you, Carl, for bringing that up. And thank you for uh, putting together such a good competitive package for the Oswald company. So <laughs> He just helped. <laughs> no, I actually don't do the quotes. I, you know, I, I just get information and send it to my quote people. So, but I knew about, I knew about the project. So. All right. Well, thank you, Carl. So we have uh, item 11. Uh, we, we added item 10 uh, D. D. and D hazard hazardous waste. D. Right. E. D is in David. D is in David. This is from uh, Kalamazoo County government. We're asking for a motion and support for the village manager to uh, sign a contract again for to participate in the uh, hazardous uh, home waste program, the HHW contract. Uh, last year, it was at $1,150, uh, well within the limits of the village manager, but uh, for the budget for the calendar year, we're budgeting it at $1,550 as we anticipate a slight increase in, in those fees. Um, but it does, uh, the county would like uh, to have copies of the minutes in which receives council support. Be happy to answer any questions about that. I have just a comment, Jim. I recently used that facility and I could not believe how efficient they were. I called to make sure they were open. Yep. And I pulled in with my van and what took three people to load took these guys less than 30 seconds to unload. So now they got this little platform, they jack it up and they back it up to my van and they slide it out and um, I couldn't, and then thank you very much. See you later. Bye. So, um, and I think the cost is well worth it as long as we can get more residents to use it. So thank you. Uh, hey, Jim, it's Rick. Just a quick question. And that is, I know the goal with this as, as any recycling program is to separate those products that we obviously are, are hazardous and we, and we don't want them in landfills. I've also seen studies that have shown that sometimes recycling finds itself in the same landfill as the stuff that, that it was recycled from. So I'm just curious, do we know where the bad stuff goes or who are the, who's, who's getting it once we drop it off? I'm, I know it's a, it's a left field question, but I'm just, I didn't know yeah. if we knew or not. No, I'll uh, report that back at the next council meeting. I, I know where it goes in Kalamazoo County, but from there I don't, but I'll, I'll send an email and report back to the council at the next uh, public meeting, if that's okay. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. No, we'll let Jim elaborate on that a little bit, but I've, I've used that place, that facility ever since I've been a resident. I bet you I'm there at least four times a year in electronics and, and just whatever hazardous material. It'll, I know the, the paint, they have different suppliers that come pick up different components. So you have guys that uh, only recycle electronics and they crush them down and they bake it out and they take the silver and the gold and all the uh, uh, heavy metals out of it. And they do the same, they won't take wiring, unfortunately. So that's that's a bad one. But yeah, they have very specific companies that come haul away uh, like oils and paints. There's a company right in Kalamazoo that recycles all the paint. So you, if you ever see anybody in large industrial complexes doing painting and it's just a, a real off ugly gray for primer, it's recycled paint, you know, that's been blended and you know, filtered. So right. well, Jim, they, they do, I know they will share that with us because I've asked them before and they had a, a paper that they gave me in about the different places and different companies that do that. Yeah, and one of the things we can do is ensure that there's a link. We can link over to their site off our website as well. And um, I that believe be their, their website has all that detail. So, Hey, Tim, let me know next time you're going to go. 
Yeah, they look at me at times pretty cross eyed. Got a load? Yeah, I could, yeah. I could use some help. <laughs> where, did, where did you come up with all this stuff? When, uh, the electronic surveillance system I brought. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was old. Cameras the size of, you know, a, a desktop and a, a controllers. And you know, they kind of looked at me like, you are you with a business? And I know this is this is my this is, Unfortunately, this was all mine. Okay. <laughs> and, and my wife was very thankful to see it all go. Mm -hmm. But yeah. So if you would. Uh, Did we get a motion? And a just a motion of support, right? We need a motion. Trustee Keller so moved. Support, Reister. Trustee Keller with the motion and support by Trustee Reister. Uh, hearing nothing further, uh, take a roll call vote. Trustee Olson. Yes. Trustee Holmes. Yes. Trustee Wagner. Yes. Trustee Merrill. Yes. Trustee Reister. Yes. President Pro Temp Keller. Yes. President Frisbee. Yes. Fantastic motion passes, appreciate it. And we'll let the Kalamazoo County know tomorrow. A couple of things uh, as we get into the village manager's report, I certainly wanna recognize and appreciate uh, Michelle Morgan, as I said at the start, um, before the official start of the meeting. Michelle uh, is on vacation. I didn't expect her to log in, but she is logged in from the great state of Minnesota, but she is on her vacation. So I wanna extend that appreciation and gratitude to her um, across one of the big ponds of Michigan. I hear her talking or I see her talking, but I don't hear it. Does anyone else? No. I think she's heard us though. And the other thing is when I said, uh, we'll go ahead and link that website to our website. I just want everyone to realize, I think even though it's Monday, that's about the fourth time I've <laughs> said that to Alex, <laughs> to Hi, our, Alex, a deemed esteemed IT person, Alex <laughs> Lay. Let's put that up on the, web. get that up on the website. We need that up <laughs> on the website by the end of the day, can't we? So in front of everyone, Alex, I'll apologize if we can't, but we'd sure appreciate that link being on the website at some point. So, um, an update on the infrastructure project. I, would, I, I just want to inform the council and, and, and our public to start with. Been a lot of social media talk. Uh, we obviously live in a world of social media. We've all been witness to it. Uh, and, and I believe the it would play out quite often. Uh, people tend to be very critical, judgmental, and sometimes even personal on uh, social media, which it, it, you know, it's right, I fully believe in the First Amendment and people's opinions, but I wanted to clarify the subject of trees. It certainly has been prominent in some local Facebook posts reference the trees coming downtown, down, in our downtown. Uh, we have been very open in, uh, uh, I think um, even as recent as January in our meetings and on social media talked about this fact. The trees had to come down due to the scope of the infrastructure project. Once this project gets downtown, the all of the sidewalks eventually are gonna be dug up and, and and those trees appropriately had to come down before April 1st. On a positive note, there are going to be trees downtown. In, in, in a downtown that is uh, going to be as progressive as any small village downtown is currently. And we believe firmly that the research that we, we have been involved in over the last three or four years uh, the investment that we're making in our streetscapes will be significant in the long-term vitality of this village. Uh, so I just wanted to inform everyone of that. Um, I, I, I uh, respect um, people's viewpoints and opinions. Uh, we've done our best to communicate, but there seems to always be some of those uh, that, that we don't reach and we'll continue to strive 
um, in getting better. But on the subject of trees, uh, the, every tree that came down was connected to the infrastructure project. There's going to be additional trees that come down as, as sidewalks along the area of Spruce Street are getting replaced. I want uh, the council to be aware, staff makes contact with the actual home's residents and the home owners uh, well in advance. And up until this point, uh, every single contact has been positive. In fact, they want, in, in cases that trees have had to come down, the owner's been appreciative of that and greatly appreciative of new sidewalks that'll be going in on Spruce Street, um, which probably date back 50 or 60 years old and heavily buckled. So wanted to, to bring everyone up to speed in case you get personal contact on that or you're here, we, as a staff, we've informed the council before we, we elect not to engage um, in the majority of social media posts, um, contact people individually and, and in other means. If I'm asked a specific, quite often, I have been asked specific questions or receive a private message on, uh, on my own social media. I'll answer those sometimes on the different pages, if they specifically have my name on it, I'll respond to it. But I'll pause there if there's any questions uh, specific to trees or any other issues that might you might have been asked about. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Julie. You know, I've lived here a long time and a lot of our urban forest is really aging out and many trees have come down when the power company um, put up the super poles, uh, especially on Washington, maybe Michigan. And a lot of them were not replaced. And I think we mourn the loss of these trees. So um, I know the ones downtown will get replaced, but maybe as a village council in the future, we would be more proactive of replacing the streetscape trees in general, um, where they've been coming down because one of the big attractions of Vicksburg is the tree line streets, just is. So um, that's just a side shoot, but um, one I care about. <laughs> okay. And on um, uh, specific to the infrastructure on Washington Street, quite a bit of progress has been made. Uh, the sewer uh, uh, line coming out of the lift station um, has, has been completed. The water line's been put in place. Uh, it will be connected up a little bit later into the project. If you were down there today, you saw them uh, lining uh, the bed with uh, the appropriate uh, sized, I think it's six double A rock or specific to, to the bids. Uh, the culvert for that section is due to arrive in the village Wednesday. It at this point is unknown whether the culvert will be put in place on Wednesday but if it arrives Wednesday, no later than Thursday, we should have that in place. One of the, uh, again, you try to take each situation, make the most of it. We had to uh, appropriately put boards that were um, cut off the water coming on the uh, waterfall and in through the creek, ultimately where this culvert's gonna be put in place as we had quite an extensive dewatering system in that area. Uh, two things, someone uh, lifted the boards up out of place. Uh, so far, this village has invested uh, over a half a million dollars into just that section of the project. Um, we do want, want our public to know that um, there's a reason for those boards in place and we needed it dry down there. So the boards now have uh, um, spikes in them where they can't come out so we can ensure the safety of those workers and everything that's being done. It'll go, we will return it once we can. Uh, on a positive note, the uh, DPW gets an opportunity to, to address some of, of the things they've been wanting to in the creek area, and you'll see that this week. Over on uh, Spruce Street, we have the sewer pipe underneath the railroad. It's been uh, very important impressive process. I've never seen that before. Uh, and what I wanted to highlight on, on Spruce Street is the project um, has also placed the appropriate water uh, pipe 
the underneath the track. So the village uh, will not have to go through that pruning process before our water prior to that stopped at the track. So we also made that investment into our future down there. Uh, there really, there's been, we anticipate, it's interesting talking to, to the crew at Millbacher and, and the, the foremans and superintendents that are in a lot of small communities throughout their career. Uh, we have had to uh, add new valves to shut water off, uh, replace others. Um, and we, we anticipated that when you start to dig into a, a town with aging infrastructure. But our goal will always be to be able to have the ability, if we have an issue in the future, to shut down the smallest section of town that we can. Mm. So where in some aspects, uh, some areas of the town, you know, might be an eighth of the town or a quarter. We're really trying it as we go through this project to enable us to shut it block by block down. And Randy and his crew have been right on top of things. And I do appreciate them. Uh, they've worked longer hours and extra hours, uh, but staying on top of it. So just wanted to update that the project is on time. We have a uh, Randy, Randy's out there all the time. I go every morning and afternoon. Uh, if something comes up, Randy will get a hold of me if I need to know about it. Uh, I, I, I did get a green hard hat today. Uh, so thank you out to <laughs> Denise Harold. I, and I have a reflective vest. So I guess I'm all, all set to go. I'm not giving up snow plowing yet, but. Well, <laughs> Okay, I hope you be. are because I hope it doesn't snow anymore. Amen. <laughs> yes. So I'll be happy to answer any any questions. Um, we are again uh, posting a couple times a week on our social media. We encourage our, our public to to sign up for social media. If they're not on that, they can go to our website and it's easily discoverable where they can plug in an email address. And anything that we post is emailed out as well. So we certainly want to reach the masses um, on the communication effort. Mr. Mallory, it's Trustee Holmes. Just a quick question regarding 22nd Street. Is there any additional work that's being scheduled out, out on that project that was finished up in the fall? Yeah, yeah well, yes, because it, it there's um, both the side... Um, on the west side of the street, there's a sidewalk bike path that will be put back to, to uh, all to be new because it has to be put back and it was all torn out. There's a yard up in a Centennial neighborhood that we have to put to, back together as well as um, some other uh, work that, that'll need to be done. Um, there is a uh, discussion right now um, in, in an easement of the village, uh, irrigation should not be put in, in an easement. Um, so there is some irrigation that was impacted uh, that I guess was in the easement. And we have a follow-up meeting next Tuesday so I can learn the specifics and the different options there. So I do want to let you know that there's going to be a discussion to take place. The majority of municipalities, I'm told, um, uh, I'll just hold off. That's good because we have a scheduled meeting with engineers in that project so I can know more of the specifics. Uh, well, actually, it's tomorrow. Thank you. I believe the other thing, and I think Randy's still on, he can nod or confirm, we did uh, plan on the edge of 22nd Street where the new pavement was put to also look at uh, putting millings or what would be appropriate on, on the edge of that road as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah. So, and I see him shaking his head So, in the positive. That's good. Yeah, any other uh, questions? Fantastic. All right. Thank you, Manager Mallory. So we, I don't think we have any committee reports. I ask you all, Jim had sent out the minutes from the uh, Sewer Water Authority from the last uh, meeting. And uh, 
please review those. If you have any comments or questions, you know, bring it up at the next meeting or reach out to Mr. Mallory. Um, you know, I know we missed the last one, so that, that's got some good in, insight for all of us to, uh, to read. Uh, with that, we'll jump over to trustees time and uh, we'll start out with trustee Merrill. Um, I miss I miss you guys. Um, it's it's going well here, and I'll be back in April. So uh, I I get to observe how they do things here, and it makes me think of how we do things there. So yeah. it's just interesting. We'll see. <laughs> Have Christy a great Reese? time, Julie. Um, yeah. No, I'm 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 good. Trustee Holmes uh, would just like to. Wish Trustee Merrill well and to suggest go to Cafe de Mon for some bonnets and we'll some do that for you. chicory <laughs> coffee. Love that too. Moolots for jambalaya, by the way. Um, plus you you learn how to dance down there a little bit differently than they do at the hideaway. So <laughs> check that out as well. It's uh Zydeco dancing is always fun. Um, just a quick Stay comment. Just I, away from people, yeah. but it's good. Yeah. <laughs> a quick comment regarding COVID vaccinations. I just happened to flip through that real quick in my earlier comments. I just wanted to share with, with those that are listening in, they're readily available out there and, and quite candidly stumbled upon this a little bit through the efforts of Jenny, my wife. Um, anybody 50 and older can get vaccinated. And Jenny was just vaccinated today. Oops, honey, I'm sorry. I just outed your age. Uh -oh. um, in any event, <laughs> she's uh, still just, a youngster. <laughs> With, you, it's Rite Aid, Myers Pharmacy, um, in the Kalamazoo Health Department. Everybody's taking, um, giving, not not only registering, but they're actually assigning times for vaccination. So they're moving pretty quickly. That's the Myers one. Because <laughs> I was here. <laughs> You're in trouble now, Holmes. Uh, it's on, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> Trust, I, I don't know what I missed. But I apologize. I reached the end of my battery life. I oh. have found. <laughs> I knew something happened. There was no warning. It just went, see ya. Uh, President Pro Tem Keller, just in time for uh, for you, if you have any last minute. I'm, I'm good. Trustee Wagner. Yeah, thank you, uh, President Frisbee. Just a quick comment. The Pittsburgh Historical Society is tentatively scheduling their opening weekend event, the May Meander for May 22nd. Uh, all, the, all the details haven't been put together yet, but hoping to have um, the buildings open, docents out, uh, inviting the public to responsibly socially distance, um, view the property, and uh, potentially getting some other local service organizations in just to Get other folks around the historic village and, and kind of celebrate the beginning of summer. Uh, so tentatively, May 22nd. Also, look forward to the speaker series, which is coming back again this year in the historic village. So some great local speakers talking about some wonderful historic topics, and that's um, going to get those dates posted out, and I'll probably talk about them in the rest of my trustees' times going forward. Great. And that's it for me. Thank you, Ryan. Trustee Olson. Uh, believe it or not, I'm good. Thank you. You're just I hope, tired. Hope you are good. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, hope you're feeling better. Now. Yeah, I hope so too, but you know, appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so president's time. I don't I don't have a lot other than you know the uh, sidewalk over on Spruce Street. What a what a great opportunity for those mm -hmm. residents. I know I had to pay 50% of the installation of these sidewalks in front of my house, and that's normal. For any resident to split the cost with the village, so by this happening, they're they're getting their new sidewalks at uh, on the village taxpayer. So that that's a good thing. And the trees, Julie, I like the idea. I think we need to talk about one of the committees that are already established. You know, making some recommendations. Uh, I know twenty years ago, somebody had the great idea, and they went through the village and put in a lot of trees, but. I don't think they had the foresight because they were stuck underneath power lines yeah. some of the oddest places. It's like, uh, you know, we, we need to go about it methodically and, and have somebody with some training, you know, uh, look at us. But it's a good idea. I, you know, True. when the gentleman over here at the, uh, over by the mill, 
I forget the name of the company over there approached us about expanding his place. You know, I asked at the time, it's like, well, for every tree you take down, put two up. And he was, he totally bought into that and they did it. So it's, I like that idea, you know, for what we take down, let's re, at least at the very least replace them. And, mm -hmm. and the downtown is going to look beautiful when it's all done and said, yeah. you know, that first year, everything's starting to take plant and uh, starting to bloom. And it's just, you know, all, all these worries will just go away. People will appreciate what had been done, but it's going to be a rough, you know, another year in making that happen. So. I appreciate everybody's time. Uh, barring no other questions or comments, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. Carl. Trustee <laughs> Keller, so moved. Reister, second. We have support, and this meeting is adjourned. You need to take a vote. I, I, I'm I'm gonna gonna take a roll call uh, vote. Uh, Sorry, Tim. <laughs> but we can still take a roll call vote uh, by signifying aye. All those in favor of adjourning the meeting say aye. 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 All those opposed? No one opposed. Right. So if I can keep Alex and Tim on the call, we'll be uh, speaking with Jeff Ritzma from South County News on this call. Um, but right. the official meeting yeah. has, has, has unanimously been declared uh, done. Thank Have a you good all. evening, everybody. Thank get you, everyone. better, get better, yeah. Jenny. Thank you.